I want to just make sure we all understand this is a very, very extremely rare yep. case. A Manitoba woman and her husband were fishing in uh, Manaki, Ontario on the Winnipeg River. Oh, I, I'm assuming they were fishing. We're going to find out here in a minute. And uh, lo and behold, she was accosted by a muskie. <laughs> accosted? And, wow. Yeah, that was big enough to drag her under the water. And uh, she joins us now, and I really appreciate you joining us. Good morning, uh, Kim. Good morning. How are you? Good I'm afternoon. good. Hi, guys. Hello. First of all, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we know you, I'm sure you're fielding a lot of uh, phone calls and messages and, and everybody wants you on, but uh, this is so interesting for us for a number of reasons. Uh, we, we, we are, you know, we love fishing for muskie, have been most of our lives. A lot of the folks who are on watching this with us have grown up fishing muskie, but this puts a whole new slant on that species. Can you tell us what happened? Uh, give, walk us through the whole the whole process, if you could. Well, there was about 10 to 12 of us. We were down on the beach at North Star Village, just floating on floaties. And then we decided to hop in the water and go for a swim. And I was just standing there, and oh, the water was just up to my chest. And all of a sudden, I felt this thing brush up against my left leg. I thought it was weeds or something that rubbed on me. And then all of a sudden it grabbed my right leg and I looked down and it was a uh, huge muskie. Both you guys fish, right? Both, both of you yep. are anglers? Yes. Yeah. Have, have you ever seen or heard of anything like this before in your lives? I've heard of people if they sit on their docks and have right. them hanging over. But I have never heard of a fish actually coming up and grabbing a hold of you and pulling you under. So, so Kim, I was saying earlier, I thought, you know, I thought maybe was, we were speculating because we've now, you know, I mean, so we see a lot of times in the world of musky and pike and big predator fish where, they, where a fish is swimming along and they grab like that, right? But you're saying yeah. you're standing up, so your legs were in a vertical position and you come over and grab like just grab it like that, right? It came in and turned and T-boned her in the cat hole. That is like that is crazier than crazy. And that then continued to thrash hard enough and pull to pull her head under the water from a standing position. That's and there was all of us standing there, literally twenty feet away from her, in disbelief. Going like we're not even sure what's going on. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, no, no, no. Have you guys ever fished that area for muskie? There has been many people that cast lures across there and have raised them. A friend of mine actually had a big one very close to that vicinity a couple of weeks ago, but he had no help, so it got off. He couldn't get to the net, so and he estimated that one to be around 50 inches. So, Wow. Oh, yeah, there's definitely lots in the area, but nobody ever thinks that they fish yeah. away from people. So. Uh, <laughs> That's, that's all we've ever seen, uh, uh, you know, as, as we pursue these creatures. It, 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 that, that's why this behooves us, because it's such an unusual thing to happen with this animal. It's just, What's uh, the water like there? Could you get a good look at the fish? I mean, is it oh, nice yeah. Clean? I can yeah? see clear down. There was actually a little painted turtle swimming around, bobbing around with us while we were swimming, and... I think it might actually have been screaming, get out. <laughs> <laughs> if turtles could talk, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, you could see clearly into the water, and uh, they're sneaky, obviously. So. How, how, big, how big do you think that fish was, Kim or, or Terry, if you saw it? How, it, was, uh, a 50, it had to be a 50-plus inch. It had to be. Yeah. It? yeah, the bite width, like on the bite on her, and it, anybody can measure it probably forever. Because the right. scar there it was around seven inches wide. Wow. So I've Googled 48 inch muskies where the guy had, had a measuring stick inside its mouth and it was five and a half inches wide. So. Really? Yeah. So oh, I that's don't. 50 plus. That's, that's, the teeth, that's teeth to teeth, seven inches wide. That's right. Impressive. Terry, right. I, I, I want to take you back to that moment if, if, if we could. 
So you're 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 in the water with your wife, and you guys have done this. By the way, you've been uh, visiting that area since two oh seven, I believe. So you're very yeah. familiar with that whole stretch and everything else. You probably you've probably done this a hundred times. I'm assuming. Yes. Yes. So so you're you're standing there in the water with your wife, and all of a sudden she behaves in a totally irrational manner. I'm assuming that that's kind of what the first thing that you see. But what's going through your head when you know there's something going on down there? Like, what you, you're not thinking this is a giant muskie pulling my wife down down into the water. Like, what's going through your head at that moment? I, I had no, at, at first I thought maybe she got stung by a horse fly in the back or something and was just trying to get it off her back. Like, I had no right. idea. It was the most, like, surreal scene. Like, there, like, there was numerous people standing there just going, uh, what's going on? Like, nobody had a clue. Wow. Well, and, and, well, we still didn't have a clue until she got closer to shore and then we could see the clouds of blood in the water and it literally looked like something out of Jaws. It was that how, long, how long did it have a hold? I mean, you know, we didn't time it, but was it like uh, uh, five seconds and maybe three seconds that it just did it stay on there? I honestly don't really remember all because I remember it grabbing me and then thrashing me and then pulling me under and all I kept doing was kicking and hitting it with my hands because I do have cuts on my hands. So maybe about five, ten seconds it lasted, but it seemed like it lasted forever. Oh my God. And, Kim, what, what happened then? It just decided to let go at that point? I, I guess so. And then once I got back up onto the surface and was really screaming, then yeah, then people actually realize that you know what Kim's not joking around here. There's something seriously going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when, when you say it pulled you under, are you talking like completely submerged under the water? <laughs> it yanked my leg down. It submer pulled me right under. Wow! Oh my God! Wow! That is incredible. What about now? So now, Kim, you have not had plastic surgery as of yet. Is there time to heal or something like that? What's going to be the next I step? Well, I go and see the plastic surgeon in three weeks, and he wants to see how the skin is growing. Right. And then after six weeks, he said, we'll figure out what our plan will be to cover up all the scars I'm going to have wow. for wow. skin grafting or yeah. whatever they're yeah. going to do. Wow. Uh, 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 anybody watching this right now, I'm sure they're in total shock just like we are because we live and play in that arena yeah. probably at least, you know, two or three days a week, all of us. We we swim and we, we have our children uh, swimming, mm -hmm. playing in, in, in water that uh, we know there are, there are literally hundreds if not thousands of musky. Yeah. How does this change that for you folks? What what can you uh, what can you help us with? Because right now we're we're all feeling. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but we're all feeling a little bit concerned here. Yeah. What can you tell us? All well, right, I I don't have any intention of going swimming again anytime soon. I'm honestly I'm terrified. I told my husband this weekend we're going to head back out to the lake, and I said I'm not even going in the fish in the boat to go fishing. I'm just going to stay up in our trailer and. I don't want to go down near the docks or the water because all I keep thinking is that she's probably there somewhere and she's just watching and it scares wow. the crap out of me. Yeah. Yeah. And justifiably so. I mean, that's a traumatic experience, right? That's something that, that that's yeah, out I, of the, I mean, nobody, I we know. I just have constant nightmares. I mean, that'll eventually go away, but yeah. it's only been four days since it happened. And, yeah, it's very traumatizing. Yeah, I think it's going to be a few more weeks before the reality of this thing sets in with both of you, I'll, I'll bet. Oh, yes. Because yeah. right now you're, you're still just the, – the adrenaline has got to be insane. I mean, it's yeah. – wow. Um, I've, been, I've been helping with dressing changes every night. It's oh. a wonderful thing. So. Oh. Had you <laughs> – have either one of you ever had an injury fishing before? You know, I know Pete and I, we – we hook ourselves all the time or, or we'll, yeah. we'll get bit by a fish when we're trying to, you know, take a hook out. Yeah. Yeah. Has that happened to you guys before? Well, for, well, we walleye fish. Like I'm not a musky fisher. 
and we walleye fish. And I mean, yeah, you have the fish and you'll get the little cut from their fins or something, but nothing, no. We have brought up several muskie on our walleyes or smallmouths and they've been shredded. I even got a couple in the net and we had them in the boats. But she knows what a muskie looks like close up. But. Oh my God. Yeah, and that's you know what a fish looks like after it's been shredded by a big muskie. Exactly. And it shows the aggressiveness of, of a muskie or a pike even because we've had pike do the same thing. But they, you know, and they're fearless, right? And they, I mean, obviously it didn't know what Kim was a human or anything, but it didn't care what it was. It just grabbed a hold of something that it wanted, you know, it was thinking food or, or whatever, or maybe attack. I doubt that. I think it was food, food, obviously, in their mind, but they don't care when they get a big muskie like that and gets on the roll. It's the king of the king of the water, right? It's the lion of the jungle. I, I would like to sort of uh, throw this out there if I could. I, I believe that this was a very rare moment. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I don't think that, you know, we need to all be afraid of muskie attacking us from now on because this is such a rare story we looked when we first heard about it yesterday we spent all day researching to see when when did we have the last actual documented real honest to goodness case of a human being being attacked by a muskie and and we can't find any so so this is such a rare occasion. You know, this is that perfect storm that only comes by once in a lifetime, I'm sure. We have to we have to think that way because otherwise who who would ever find water? You yeah. know. So you guys need to know that this this was uh, for whatever reason, this was just once in a lifetime. It happened you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, man, oh man, I, I, I just I, I, I just can't put myself in your position, both of you. Uh, obviously, you more so, Kim, because you experienced it. But for you, Terry, to see your wife uh, being dragged under the water, I mean, that's just, I can't even imagine what that is like. It was horrifying. She was horrified, obviously. Luckily for us, at the time, the people we were in the water with and our family out at North Star Village, all of our friends, Two of them are nurses, two of them are OPP officers. So luckily for me, because I got my own issues with my feet, that's another story. But luckily for me, they were there to help because they took care of everything. And I went up and got my truck, came back. She was ready to go to the hospital. So that was fantastic because without those people, I have no idea what I would have done. You know, I wrote a little article about this, a uh, little blog about this that was, that's being posted today. And and I refer to it as the craziest year that we, any of us, will ever have to endure. Uh, obviously, COVID is is high on our list, but there's been a few strange things happening this year. This is going to be in our top 10, I'll guarantee you, for 2020. We're going to be talking for about this sure. for a long time. And sure. uh, it's, it's just one of those things. And how ironic is it that it comes during, I know people are going to laugh at me, it comes during Shark Week on Discovery. Right, you know. Yeah, and you yeah. know what else was starting in Manaki that day? What? The, local, the locals' muskie hunt started that day. It's still on right now. No way. Yeah. Oh, my that God. started that day in muskie hunt. So, wow. That is, that is just unbelievable. Folks, I, I can't thank you enough for joining us. There aren't any yeah. words for us all. We, we, we feel with – when we saw and heard about the story, we uh, – we all um, were there with you because we spent okay. a lot of time in those waters too. We have fished those waters, and and uh, for you to come on the show and, and talk to us in person, it's just uh, just it was, it was a moment. Of, we had a moment of disbelief, obviously, because Kim, as you know, I mean, you've never heard of it before. We've never we live fishing. We've never heard of it really like that. And the story when we read the story about what happened to you. So thank you for coming on and, and proving to the vet the world, you know, that this is the reality. It doesn't yeah. happen. So. You're yeah, gonna that, yeah, that's another reason why we're so like Kim doesn't want to do this kind of stuff anymore. I'm just trying to tell her get the right story out because she's reading exactly. all that stuff on social media and she's getting angry because you know yeah. people are saying uh, uh, some of the most ridiculous things ever about oh, this. Yeah. So uh, it was a weed whacker, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it was a weed whacker, all right. Nobody ever wants to run into that weed whacker. To both <laughs> of you, I, I will leave you with this message. There are a lot of kooks out on the internet, yeah. and, um, and this seems to bring the best out in them or the worst, depending on which side you're on. Uh, we've experienced it ourselves. 
Don't let it get you down. They're going to be there, and it doesn't matter what the issue is. They lurk in those weeds. Um, so don't take it personal. But uh, once again, I, I want to thank you for, for joining us, and uh, let's stay in touch. Let's let's see how you – I'd love to – Kim, I would love to have you back on the program, um, you know, in a few months or, or, or thereabouts. And uh, I, I would like to hear that that you're back in the saddle. You're fishing again. Uh, you won't let this one isolated yeah. little speck in time affect the way you look at things. Because I can tell from both of you speaking to you that you've got great attitude and great outlook on life. Don't let this change it. it it's a one in a million. Hey, you just won a lottery. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So we'll be buying tickets. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, appreciate it you take care up there and uh we'll talk to you again all right thank, thank you, you so very much. much and i'd just like to say to 2020 enough already you are well <laughs> said care. well yeah. said wow that's wow. wow we got it from the mouth on that one literally that's that's scary man that's like because i know a lot of people when you just caught it at musky legs they don't want it that much. Them in the leg just when they see a musk like that, and you know, you're always thinking, ha, ah, whatever. Like, this is man, that's the reality. Yeah, you're one in one in a million or one in a billion or whatever it would be in odds, but it happened, right? Here's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of you know, this thing's good, it's got legs already, but it, it, those legs are gonna grow in the in the in the days and weeks to come as this story percolates and expands and mm -hmm. uh and uh, uh gets out in social media. Um I I, I I want to just make sure we all understand this is a very, very extremely rare yep. case. And it might it might be a one of. And if anybody's got uh, any information that would lead us to discovering a similar story, I'd like I'd love for you to reach out to us. But I think it's a one of. Uh, I just think it was the perfect storm. Everything led to this. I don't think we can put anything. Let me, and the reason I'm saying this, my daughter, Nikki's mother, she has been terrified for years about going in water, both salt water and fresh. And for years, I have reassured her that it's okay. And a story like this could affect a person like that in a very negative way. Yeah. So I, I just, you know, it really... Yeah. It, it, the, the same in the same sense I mean, like we look at it like, like Ann said the odds are ridiculous that it will happen I mean I swam my whole life and I've never ever had that and, and everybody watching here on the sidebar is watching us today has never had it happen I'll pretty much guarantee that you know what I mean so the odds are and you know what you really what we would appreciate and I know yeah everybody would appreciate is a few people share this actual cast with other people to see the real story of what happened if you can get exactly. that put on your facebook pages because because they're right Kim's right the social media idiots out there that want to take oh. this and then blew it into something kind of crap so if you can share this on your pages tell people please check out this uh, this uh, interview that Angie pete had with the real victim here and then they will hear the story uh, that we, we'd appreciate that and i think the whole fishing community would appreciate that too so